Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Anna Masan Orac, and I'm uh, Rector's Play Potentiary for, for Africa, along with I'm uh, doing the research on uh, innovation and startup, uh, uh, building startup ecosystem in different regions uh, worldwide, uh, but recently, especially in C region. And uh, today, uh, webinar uh, is mainly focused on how to build the, the great ecosystem, innovation ecosystem for startup. And for this reason, I invited to my uh, webinar two distinguished guests, uh, Eva Geresh and Maciej uh, Sadowski. Uh, Eva is a Programs and Global Partnership Director at Venture Cafe Warsaw, and uh, she is responsible for several programs aimed at uh, strengthening the innovation environment in Poland and connecting it globally. Uh, Eva served as a president of uh, Sieter Poland Society for International Education Training and Research, which is the largest network of intercultural in Poland. She's co-organized the Sieter Congress 2016, Intercultural Competences, the Key to Today's Global World. Thank you, Eva, for joining our webinar today. I will give you the floor in a minute, but let me introduce also Maciek, uh, Maciek Sadowski. Uh, Maciej is a, a co-founder and CEO of the Startup Hub Poland uh, Foundation, SGP uh, 2012, which advocates innovative Central Eastern European high-tech talent in starting up a global interlocal ventures in Poland. Uh, he's also activist of the high-tech startup industry, supporting pioneers of innovation in finding investment and scaling up their solutions and the raw potential. IP transfer specialist and R&D commercializing expert. In uh, his foundation, much searches for best early stages from all hard tech and IP based sector from 18 countries of the C region. For best teams, uh, his nonprofit prepares a soft lending program, non equity grants of 50K um, uh, euro and exclusive VC industry bootcamps. Also, thank you, Magic, for joining us um, during this uh, webinar. So let me first thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, recently, we've seen Poland as the leader among one of the leaders among the CEO countries in respect of number of introduced instruments of innovation policy. The most common form of support for innovation in CE region are research grants, mainly from coming from the, the European Union, but also development of information and technology and communication technology, ICT, during and after the coronavirus pandemic, also may be a driving force of many economies. So please let me uh, ask you, uh, what do you think about uh, Polish ecosystem uh, for startups from your perspective, from your uh, experience, uh, just a few words before we go further in our discussion. I can I can start. Uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Anna, uh, for, for inviting us um, to, to this webinar. Uh, I think that this this is a really important topic, and uh, and um, uh, our ecosystem here in Poland is um, uh, is is still uh, growing. Like recently, um, uh, PFF uh, PFR Ventures and uh, uh, Innovo uh, with Mom Startup published the uh, report uh, that uh, in um, uh, second quarter of 2022 uh, the uh, venture capitals and the investors uh, invested uh, one uh, billion. Uh, Polish lotte uh, in the startups. Um, uh, it was um, like uh, be, now, now uh, there are some some changes because of uh, um, what is happening all over the world. But uh, but still, the ecosystem is uh, uh, is growing, and uh, and I think that uh, uh, the uh, really important factor is the. Uh, this uh, high effectiveness of uh, uh, specialists in IT industry in Poland is also we have really skilled uh, specialists and, and it's still cost effective 
uh, comparing uh, uh, to some countries. And this is really important because uh, uh, you mentioned pandemic and um, uh, a lot of solutions uh, that are focused on digitalization uh, are um, uh, growing uh, right now because pandemic was a disaster for some industries, but for, for, for some of them, um, uh, it was uh, like um, really, uh, I don't wanna say helpful, uh, but it's um, uh, enable uh, them to grow. Um, so uh, I think that that uh, um, despite of like some some changes uh, all over the the world right now, uh, like we should really focus on the things that we we have right now, like infrastructure, people, and uh, and the the ecosystem um, can still grow. Okay, we're going to continue about the uh, topic uh, in a few minutes. And now, please, uh, Maciek, the floor is yours. A few, uh, few minutes from, uh, from your experience, please. Of course. First of all, thank you, Anna, um, for having us. Indeed, it's a great pleasure to be part of, of such an interesting format and important format, I would say, because the knowledge about how um, profitable um, of talent investment or capital, other capital, financial capital investment in Central Europe and in particular in Poland is not very well acknowledged, not very well, uh, not, not very famous, I would say. Uh, after what Eva has said, she, she delivered a very good business card of, of Poland. Um, I'm in line with, with this diagnosis and this short recapitulation. So honestly, there is not much to add in terms of some core metrics of Polish market. I could try like comparing Poland with some other great Central European market like Estonia or Czech Republic or Romania, a, um, emerging dragon on Eastern part of the continent, uh, still with a huge supremacy in terms of numbers from the Polish side. But I would rather say something more maybe journalistically or philosophically. Um, in, in US, we have capital cities for innovation. We know that we can go to the East Coast, to Boston, or maybe to New York, let, let's say Boston, Montreal, New York, this triangle, or on the West Coast to North California, Palo Alto and the Silicon Valley. Right now on the South, uh, Texas is particularly strong and lots of uh, transactions are going on there. In Europe, similarly, we know London is super sexy for startups, for talents, for investors and angels. Berlin the same story and Tel Aviv. But the Central Eastern European chair of the leader is not occupied yet. And um, of course there were two great candidates or maybe more, but I would definitely highlight Vienna uh, and uh, Stockholm as two you know, um, cities which really desired to be connotated as the capital of the Central Eastern Europe. But honestly speaking, from, not because I'm from Warsaw and I was born here and I grew up here, but from the very, very analytical and uh, non-emotional assessment, it is Warsaw right now. So the, this, this competition um, uh, for a splendor of being the place where people should go, meet, interact and forge some very meaningful deals in terms of innovation and high tech is right now in Warsaw. By Warsaw, of course, I understand everything that is, you know, two hours from Warsaw. So, of course, Krakow and Gdańsk and Poznań, Wrocław, they all benefit to Warsaw, which of course has this uh, part, um, additional valor of being the capital city with, you know, lots of headquarters of international corporations. What is also important, corporations which do not cover only Poland from Warsaw. They usually, like really, really predominant number, they cover all Central Eastern European region. Of course, every corporation has its own definition. Sometimes, funny fact, Iceland is in uh, under jurisdiction of a big regional headquarter of an American company. But uh, generally speaking, let's say everything from Vienna to Almaty in Kazakhstan and from Helsinki to, to Skopje or to, to Athens belong to this region. And Warsaw is actually in the center and Warsaw has uh, the biggest number of venture capital um, funds and 
money, overall sum of money allocated in, in this, you know, small, relatively small area. So uh, my own assessment about uh, Poland uh, and Warsaw as a, you know, big point of this, of this uh, country um, is very, very positive, exactly as Eva has summarized. Uh, I do believe that this difficult time, which you already have mentioned after COVID, Eva also uh, said that COVID was a very turbulent time. Uh, I think there is a special momentum for Poland right now, and maybe we will have a chance to um, dig deeper and explore this topic uh, later while you will be asking us another questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you so, uh, so much, Maciek. As you said, Warsaw like right now is playing a crucial role and probably that's why uh, uh, Cambridge Innovation Center uh, has chosen Warsaw for the next innovation center, right? So uh, it wasn't by like uh, a, a wild guess, you know why, but uh, it was definitely a, a, a profound analytical research uh, uh, which city in C region uh, would be growing very, very fast. But it wouldn't uh, actually has happened if Poland would not go um, uh, uh, go through development path uh, of the countries uh, and the regions of Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, we have to uh, say that, that before the transformation, Poland was actually one of the least economically developed countries in C11 group. In respect of GDP per capita uh, at PPP, it exceeded only Romania. So uh, actually during this, uh, in 1990 up to uh, uh, 2019, the fastest growing economy uh, in the C region group was Poland, whose GDP rose more than 2.5 times. Um, it means that the average annual growth rate was 3.2%. Uh, uh, the only C country that had undergone transformation and had a similar uh, development rate was Slovakia, uh, 2.5 percent annually. So actually, at that time, uh, in 1990 uh, up to 2019, Poland managed to reduce the economic development gap with the old member states of the European uh, Union, except Ireland. So uh, this definitely uh, put us in that way of transformation uh, that um, as a result, the threats um, interaction of these trends, Poland managed to reduce uh, significantly uh, the, this economic development gap uh, with the old uh, member state, as I said, but also uh, improvement of the relative development position of the Polish economy was a consequence of not only higher economic growth rate, but also diverse demographic trends at that time, as well as direction and pace of currency exchange rate fluctuation in individual countries. Actually, all the data and all the tables that uh, I'm gonna present uh, today uh, are coming from uh, our SGH Warsaw School of Economics and Economic Forum report. Uh, for the last three consecutive years, we are doing the research on different aspects and different trends uh, in the CE region. And one of the parts of our uh, research is also the startup uh, ecosystem. Uh, later on, uh, we will put the links to uh, the whole reports that uh, you can see uh, more, uh, more details that we are actually today have in, uh, uh, in this cast. So uh, as you see, uh, in this uh, short GDP growth in Central and uh, Europe uh, countries in that period, 1990, uh, 2019, um, in the period following Poland's accessions of the EU, its GDP growth by 80%, uh, on average by about 4.2% a year. Similarly to the entire period of political transformation, uh, our country was in re this respect as a leader in the group of the new EU member states. Only Slovakia with 73% uh, and Romania with 70% growth achieved a similar rate. Simultaneously, Poland also had a much higher growth rate than EU 15 countries. It should be highlighted that in 2004, 2019, all the C11 countries except Croatia 
had a higher economic growth than the average age for EU15 economies, which meant a reduction of the historical wealth gap with the Western Europe. Now, I would like to concentrate um, on the system of support for startups in CE uh, Eastern, uh, in CE um, region. Uh, from our research, Estonia, Poland, Lithuania, Czech and Slovenia are the leaders of development of startups support system in Central and Eastern Europe. The startup support infrastructure is the worst developed in Albania, Bulgaria and Croatia. As a result of the pandemic, it will be more difficult for startups to receive financing from venture capital funds. But also, now let's, let's focus with my guests about how actually, uh, what startups are looking for. Are they looking for um, investors? Are they looking for um, innovation or support from institutions? How, how would we actually um, describe the typical startup from the CE region, what they are looking for? Uh, Maciek, maybe we start in this turn uh, from you. The floor is yours. Spl splendid, splendid, of course. Um, thank you for this question. Um, working in a team of Startup Hub Poland, I actually have a first hand answer to this because we are deeply deeply researching every uh, applicant who wants to work with us in frames of a variety of programs name it incubation or acceleration programs or clubs with investors with angels with venture capital funds so we have uh, we, we have answers on that and um, the most visible elements that every startup who is interested in Poland and it can be startup from Poland originally or which is my speciality which I love most of all those colleagues who are coming from other countries because they like to have a better catapult you know a better starting launching pad like Canaveral for NASA for for you know space flights uh, and they are saying mainly which on the beginning surprised me but right now I see the reason standing behind that, which is startups from Central Eastern Europe are not looking that much into investors in Poland. Of course, they are also, but it's in my opinion, it's not the main point. They are looking for a stable place. By stable, I mean, you know, not affected by major crises under very good European Union uh, jurisdiction. Uh, with a good GDP, annual growth that you have beautifully described to us uh, minutes ago. And they know that in Poland, they can expect that one technological milestone can be produced or developed 3.2 times cheaper than in Boston and almost, almost four times cheaper than in Silicon Valley. How crazy is that? It means that if I am a startupper and Eva is a startupper and Eva is uh, because of her great network, she's going to Silicon Valley to develop exactly the same technology. Like it's a, of course ex an example. It means that Eva will need to raise four times more capital to have exactly the same tempo, speed of technological development in terms of, you know, CapEx, team, uh, software, other acquisitions, smaller acquisitions, other costs, uh, office and administ administrative taxes than I would have. So obviously, especially now after COVID, that was a major, not only a major killer, but also a major teacher. We all know that right now, also venture capitalists know that we can work remotely with our portfolio companies. So it's really a very smart move to set up a company in European Union in a relatively cheap, still cheap country of Poland, even in expensive also, but still uh, you can have accountant in, I don't know if the audience knows the cities, but in Ostrowenka, for example, a smaller city in, in a Voivodship or in Ad or in Trastnes, you can have your graphic designer. So honestly speaking, you can, definitely decrease your cost of development well capital of course poland as eva said from we, we know it from the um, quarterly uh, presented report 
Poland is the master place for venture capital transactions in Central Eastern Europe, but you can find venture capital in Sweden or Germany or Denmark or France. So it's not that we have some, some Marvel superpower in terms of venture capital fund. We have, okay, growing up and nicely developing market for high-risk capital. And another element which also comes, I'm sorry for repeating Eva so much after you, but also Poland has such a deep, um, um, how to say, deep uh, pocket of talented engineers. You know, uh, in, in, in Poland we have 1.5 million people with, uh, with uh, in, in engineering uh, studies, not accomplished maybe, but at least, you know, some, some capability in, in doing uh, engineering topics like ICT, of course. So uh, with such a talent pool, it's not, e it's not uh, mm, very difficult to, in a certain moment, transform your startup into big company or, you know, medium and then big company using the resources, the intellectual resources, the infrastructure, but mainly intellectual infrastructure that is available here. And the last sentence is also the income of great specialists, like really, and it's not just a courtesy, twice that better than I am, from Ukraine, from Belarus, they are coming here and they are uh, absolutely astonishing they can uh, perform very difficult projects they are well organized with super good discipline with beautiful english with 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 good mindset and uh, the fact that we have close neighbors that are willing to come to our country and work here is also an asset that you cannot ignore thank you Maciek. and now uh, eva you from your experience and actually from the organization that uh, you are representing uh, also uh, today. Uh, how, how is it from, from, from your end? Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Maciek, for your really uh, insightful uh, thoughts. And um, yeah, I, I also uh, uh, agree. And I can also add, um, like from, from my experience, we, we as a venture cafe or so, our mission is connecting innovators to make things happen. And we are doing it through different programs. Uh, and we, we connecting startups, investors, uh, uh, like um, entrepreneurs, uh, people from the science world, art world, and, and uh, we are organizing both like events and also one of our program is a soft landing program uh, that um, uh, enables to, uh, to 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 start the business in in Poland for for, for people who are uh, coming here and would like to open the the, the branches. Uh, also is is good for that because some some of the uh, companies that I that, that are coming looking for the access for the whole European Union and uh, and establish office here uh, they 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 have it and they are also getting the support from from the uh, mentors experts and and from my experience what the the startups are looking for right now at, at the moment is not only money like they don't want to cooperate with uh, investors who are offering just money they they are looking for this support like for this mentorship for uh, for the network because they um, like if if uh, the startups are like look, uh, thinking seriously about what are are they doing? They are focused on looking for the clients and how to exceed the, the business. Know uh, how to find the 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 money, uh, because um, yeah, they 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 are they, they, they are aware that it, it shouldn't be the the aim. Uh, so uh, so. Uh, uh, for example, our um, uh, soft landing uh, uh, program uh, was um, based on some meetings with the experts, uh, uh, from uh, with also uh, like some experts uh, in in the taxation, and we also cooperated with uh, with experts from EY who were able to explain uh, how uh, how they should operate uh, in Poland. Uh, like recently, I, I had also the meeting with uh, uh, with one uh, um, like really uh, good tech startup from Asia, 
and they wanted to open the branch here in Poland, but they and they wanted to uh, to establish IT team here because they heard that they should, uh, but they they had no idea like. Uh, how to do that, how to uh, reach those people with whom they should cooperate. So what we are doing uh, like here in Innovation Campus uh, as a, a Cambridge Innovation Center and Venture Cafe, uh, like we're trying to build this place, uh, this, uh, let's say one place that, that you, can, you, can, you can come and uh, we can um, just just help you and contact you with the uh, right people. Uh, of course, Maciek as a startup hub Poland are doing it like also like really uh, effectively, and and we cooperate with. Uh, uh, so 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 uh, if uh, like for example somebody will come here for our uh, meetup for innovators the Thursday gathering and uh, and. Um, I know that it needs some help, uh, like regarding the things that Maciek are doing. I, I I'm directly uh, contacting him with 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 Maciek or also different organizations who are like here here in Poland. So the same works for opposite direction as well, of course. Yeah, we are good this friends. Is, yeah, this is this is our mission because we are like a platform. And uh, we are not doing like uh, accelerating programs like like Maciek uh, does. Uh, we we want to be a platform, and our mission is to connect and to just redirect um, for the right people. Um, uh, that uh, that's why we also cooperated with Star uh, Startup Guide, and we we published the book Startup Guide Warsaw. Startup Guide is an international organization, and they uh, they are in Lisbon and Copenhagen, and uh, they they are publishing the the, the books about um, different uh, ecosystems in different cities, different different countries, and and here there is a list of the places that uh, that uh, founders can can go, uh, like the best startups, the best uh, founders uh, selected, uh, uh, also schools um, uh, also uh, like a lot of uh, helpful information so so if uh, somebody is thinking about Warsaw or about uh, different city in CE I highly encourage just to go to uh, startup guide and and check this uh, uh, this book because because uh, uh, there is um, a lot of information about um, uh, the eco ecosystems and innovation ecosystems. We we really wanted to publish this book um, because uh, it's, it's a first book about Warsaw. I, uh, I I believe that they are like two about Berlin, and uh, we we also uh, wanted to uh, to publish it uh, and uh, have this have it uh, global distribution um, that this book is uh, accessible. Uh, in different um, ecosystem centers uh, all over the world. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eva, for your insightful thoughts about it. And actually, uh, as you mentioned already, uh, countries of uh, Central and Eastern Europe recently uh, undertaken many measures to improve the uh, startup support system in place and uh, to make them more enterprise and invest friendly. Um, as well as to encourage the dynamic uh, growth, international expansion and global success. In order to uh, systematize uh, the research methods, uh, as I've mentioned, our reports uh, uh, and our research in uh, Warsaw School of Economics, uh, our team decided as a part of a panel of experts that um, we're going to um, check uh, on one hand, innovation research and authors of our study is going to examine 10 factors compromising, uh, according to us, to our expert uh, system of startups, uh, support of C uh, countries. So as you can see, uh, these factors include uh, social economic development, taxation system, intellectual property protection, academic entrepreneurship, government agencies, startup accelerators, regulatory sandboxes, clusters and network organization, uni, uh, unitizing startups, venture capital funds, and success of startups in respect of the visibility and uh, recognizability of the startup support system uh, stakeholders. 
actually during um, during the the, the results uh, of of our research, uh, actually allowed to identify five leader great startup support system, which is Estonia, Poland, Lithuania, Czech, uh, and uh, Slovenia. Uh, four leader is Raising Star Great System, which is in Latvia, Hungary, Romania, and Slovakia, and three developing system, Albania, Bulgaria, and uh, Croatia. As we have uh, mentioned uh, before, uh, pandemic and uh, coronavirus pandemic uh, for Poland and other countries of Central and European Union uh, actually <clears throat> play a huge role in how the startup development system is going to, uh, to, to, to look like. And actually, um, now I would like to, 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 to talk a little bit about the major implication of that pandemic for Poland and wider CE region uh, eco ecosystem. Uh, because of the pandemic, it will be more difficult for startups, as we said before, to receive financing from venture capital funds. Many funds uh, had already uh, limited their investments. Uh, it can be expected that in the nearest future to receive VC financing, business will have to demonstrate very well considered ideas, actual scalability of activities, experience in startup projects, but in current circumstances, uh, high risk, uncertain projects rather uh, will not succeed. It also expected that the industries who are taking advantage of the pandemic, offering solutions particularly useful and desired during the pandemic crisis, will be, have the financing priority. And those most affected by the pandemic are the startups operating offline, especially in the tourism, even the land tech, uh, lending technology sector. It's also a difficult time for startups delivering various products made of components imported from abroad, such as enterprises, manufacturing hardware, um, and uh, so far, uh, so on. So now I would like to uh, ask uh, Eva from, from your experience, how do you um, perceive actually this, uh, not, we cannot say post pandemic time because we still even, uh, even now we experience more coronavirus uh, uh, people uh, who are suffering from that. Uh, so uh, yes, Eva, uh, the floor is yours. Sure. Um, uh, as I uh, mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, I, I think that it um, also depends on the industry, because, for example, um, for some uh, tech uh, startups and tech uh, com companies, this coronavirus was uh, like an engine uh, for for a growth, and also uh, a lot of companies, a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, just realized the importance of digital solutions, and uh, the the pandemic was this uh, this major factor that that really um, uh, speed up this digitalization process. Uh, that um, uh, this this process uh, um, was happening uh, like some some years ago, but it was really slow, and uh, and it was something like nice to have, and and suddenly it appears that it's must have, and uh, and and now like the world like uh, won't be the same because because um, uh, everyone. Uh, realized the importance of that and for some uh, some some companies in in e-commerce area in uh, this uh, creating some uh, uh, digitalization solutions uh, like the pandemic uh, like really was something that that support this 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 uh, this uh, this, uh, this grow uh, and um, also, for example, we, um, as a venture cafe, we we are organizing uh, this this weekly um, uh, meetups for uh, for the group of innovators, and we have like every week like 200, 300 people. And when uh, pandemic started, we couldn't do that 
And this is, uh, as I mentioned, we are uh, connecting people. So it was difficult, really difficult for us to, uh, to do that. And we, we started um, uh, um, to organize uh, online events uh, at the series of innovation uh, bridges, uh, which was the uh, connecting uh, Warsaw with different cities all over the world. Uh, and um, uh, also in, in uh, Africa, as uh, Anya, you know, and Maciek also knows because you've participated in those events, we were presenting um, uh, uh, Polish uh, startup ecosystem, business ecosystem, and city ecosystem. And the same, like the participants co could, uh, could learn uh, uh, about uh, uh, the other uh, city. And uh, we were using for that, uh, like the tool um, uh, for, for online events, because we, we didn't want to use this um, uh, like basic platforms that, that enable you to, to connect, but we, we, we wanted to give our participants the experience that they, they can changing the tables and they, they, they can like uh, really feel uh, as a real event, and and I know that also this uh, in uh, area uh, were booming during pandemic because um, uh, when we were doing the research uh, about this kind of solutions, uh, like the, the the market was 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 full of that. So um, so like of course like pandemic is. Uh, uh, like it's, it's black swan and it's 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 like like the disaster for for uh, a lot of people and entrepreneurs um i i think that uh, that's uh, uh, like we should look at that um as a opportunity maybe to uh, like to to create new solutions to be creative because we we cannot just just change that so it would be great to uh, to take um, something out of it and to 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 make it uh, positive in some way thank you eva definitely uh, we should look also for the opportunities for dynamic uh, develop uh, startups development have opened for enterprises uh, offering innovation solutions for remote education, uh, education technology, edtech, e-commerce, teletech, uh, medtech, uh, bio biotechnology, cybersecurity, uh, computer games, esports, supplies, logistics, online media, so far so on, right? Um, so uh, it can also be expected that the new businesses conditions would spur further innovativeness of these types of, of films. Uh, Magic, from, from your end, how pandem uh, pandemic and uh, how will it look like after? Yes, um, very correct. Uh, I think that um, our high-tech market behaved like a um, human organism or like a human society. So on the beginning, there was a shock. Lots of my colleagues who are running venture capital funds as partners, managing partners, they told me, so the dark uh, ages are coming and we need to, cons we are stopping our investments right away and we will uh, focus all our attention, all our skills and time to startups that we already have in our portfolio because these startups will need most of help right now in this very difficult time that are coming. Uh, they were wrong, they were wrong. After a few months, the same people told me, no, 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 right now we are investing. The startups are okay. Well, some of, of course, affected, but uh, definitely they are in comparison to big organizations like corporations, they are super better off. I mean, the deep tech startups, yes, where you don't need to have big, big logistics, where you don't need to have a long supply chains because you are a startup, you are prototyping new technology and introducing it to the market. Uh, with you know looking for your scalable business model so you don't have regular problems that bigger uh, players do uh, but uh, investors coming back to them they said right now we are investing why because uh, investors and in venture capital uh, sector or business angels they should be or i can even say they are a bit futuristic they try to assume 
what will be the scenario or what will be the image in 2025 or 2030. So it's their professional duty to make some kind of prognosis and such a shock, such a dramatic strike it's always a um, good reason to reevaluate your investment strategy. So, in, and we can see it from numbers. It's uh, like on the stock market, just invest when, um, when is blood over there. Yes, exactly. Invest where there is blood over there. Exactly. And uh, venture capital funds did the same. So that was the first reaction, exactly like, like uh, human nature um, indicates in terms of individuals or societies. And now we, we see a long-term COVID um, effects, like with health. We can also have some late COVID problems. So here are rather, I would say, long COVID uh, gains rather than losses, which are venture capital market and startups themselves realized that every, literally every segment of our life will, will, will be changed because of uh, the experience of COVID, of pandemia or expectation that a new pandemic can um, you know arrive uh, in several years from now so like everything i think it's it's even stupid from my side to to give examples like work will change of course entertainment will change yes of course building real estate will change it changed a lot real estate market has has uh, um, experienced an enormous transformation during covid time so uh, let's just agree with this hypothesis or this maybe trivial remark that every segment of our life have changed. And for big companies that are that have good brands that we know very well that we are buying online or going to a store and taking their products from the shelf, it's very hard to adapt very fast. For startups, that's a natural way of being. You know, it's a natural um environment to make rapid change uh, changes um, um some you know circus evolutions and pivots it's very normal so startups really had a, a great um, um time i would say uh, in comparison to big businesses which really saw and medium businesses like normal businesses restaurants hairdressers uh, wedding industry everything it's changed a lot uh, and last sentence here, I would say that uh, apart from those uh, niches that you have uh, mentioned and uh, enumerated, Anna, uh, I would uh, say that uh, topics related to um, old school medical problems right now, after uh, the, the the major the major strike of COVID will come back. So oncology, technologies around oncology, they will be super important. Uh, other than COVID, other than viral diagnostics. So medtech, which was focused only on COVID for two years, right now is coming back to topics which, which are usually interesting, aging, um, orphanage diseases. So I expect the number of investment and the volume, volume of money um, inserted to Polish startup ecosystem in health tech in non-COVID related areas will be doubled or tripled in next two, maybe maybe two, maybe three, three years. So um, I I can only high five with Eva here saying that no, and and it's very hard for a person with you know good heart I hope to admit that. But COVID, which is a major killer, and you know the 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 dark character of, of the third deca decade of the 23rd century was actually an ignition and an engine for a startup industry. Yeah, thank you. Definitely yeah. a positive and aspect uh, of the new reality is that uh, actually it creates an opportunity to, to, material, to materialize the new ideas, highlights the new needs of societies trapped um, in homes and uh, restricted functioning in real space for those who perceive the, the situation as a challenge, uh, not a threat or impediment. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is just a set of new conditions, opportunity to demonstrate uh, greater innovativeness and flexibility. That's uh, what I would say. Uh, so just to summarize, <laughs> Uh, as we're gonna a um, few minutes uh, finish our uh, our webinar, uh, I'm sure that we could talk like 24 hours. Uh, 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 but um, 
in regards of, of, of our uh, uh, publicity, uh, we won't uh, make it longer. So as a last, as a last round, Eva, you've mentioned uh, digitalization, uh, which could play um, a huge role as well in uh, building up and as you've uh, also uh, uh, put one of the example how you use the, the, the new platform for connecting people, which was actually absolutely great. Uh, uh, I've also experienced uh, as a user uh, that, that platform, but uh, we have to bring in mind that most economics of the CE uh, are still at the stage of economy uh, 3.0. And the only positive exceptions are Estonia and Czech Republic. And enterprises from the rest of the region, uh, including Poland, only to a small extent engaged in the processes of production, automation, <clears throat> use of uh, 3D prints, big data uh, analysis, and use of uh, computing clouds. Uh, in respect of rate of economic innovation, C countries then are only moderate uh, innovators. So how we can uh, catch up and reach uh, convergence, I would say, uh, with the other EU 27 countries, uh, providing they make correct decision concerning the industry's uh, policy and, and how it would happen to uh, help to build this startup uh, different platform for uh, support um, actually raising innovativeness of the Central and uh, Eastern Europe country. Just a just few, uh, few words uh, on that as a, um, as a summary. I also just wanted to add one, uh, one thing because Maciek mentioned really important um, uh, um, the thing about uh, like our uh, culture, I think that we are really good in um, uh, adjusting, and uh, because we had um, we had a lot of moments uh, even in our history that we had to adjust, and I think that um, that it's uh, uh, now we can see it also in a business uh, uh, culture. Uh, we are keeping this this balance between uh, planning and uh, and adjusting to uh, to some circumstances. And the good example of that it might be also fintech uh, sector, uh, when uh, in for example in Poland uh, like the uh, this this infrastructure uh, like was not so developed as the. Uh, uh, Western countries and uh, and some uh, some banks and some companies uh, in fintech uh, sector started to uh, to, to to making um, uh, here uh, some some tests and also people were like really open to a lot of innovations and 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 Poland uh, became a, a leader in this uh, uh, fintech sector. It was it was easier to just build this infrastructure uh, than uh, than than uh, change it. And also the this uh, approach and this uh, um, openness um, uh, from people uh, were really important here. And I think that uh, that now uh, like we can observe uh, something uh, similar that uh, that a lot of companies and a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurs uh, I think is about this spirit of uh, just looking for new solutions uh, that just uh, um, uh, like um, generally in Polish culture is like that somebody is saying no a lot of people is not taking this no just there's this thinking about okay so what what the solution that I can just uh, uh, reach this goal uh, in different way. It's it, it, there is there is even the saying in in, in uh, Poland that uh, uh, if they don't allow you to 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 come in using the door, uh, try the window. And I think that that this uh, uh, like this this characteristic about the the culture is also like playing here a uh, uh, important role uh, because. Um, I also know a lot of in entrepreneurs who are who are in travel industry, and then 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 immediately started like like over the weekend they 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 did the pivot and they changed like business model like uh, um, uh, and and they were uh, operated in the market like 
like several years or like so so it's 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 amazing and i i saw a lot of this kind of ex, uh, examples of the entrepreneurs and and startups who who just started to think differently and I think that that this is this strength that that we should we should also um, uh, highlight. And and I think that a lot of cultures are like similar in CE. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think that we can focus on that and just 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 build it because we are not like sitting and waiting. We are trying to do something, to change something, to uh, to use it as a, as an opportunity, not just look uh, as it as as a as a problem, as a challenge, and just give up. So uh, uh, I think that this is really important, and we should uh, keep this spirit. Thank you, Eva I, and Magic. Please, the floor is exactly. yours. Exactly. Well, uh, I I like this webinar very much. Uh, the one disadvantage that I see is that I am all the time perfectly in line with what Eva is saying so there is no not much place for argumentation or you know a little um, how to say clash of, of, of positions uh, I can only add something if I may which is 10 years ago when I started with my colleagues Startup Hub Poland as an NGO based in Warsaw we were aware that on our planet, our beautiful planet, the real competition for high-tech talents has begun. And uh, after 10 years, I can say that th that beginning 10 years ago was really nothing. Right now, every country, every continent, every region wants to place, position itself as the very place for great guys, girls who want to uh, build up new innovative and fast-growing companies. Canada is a um, very strong and very powerful example of such marketing, of such a P maybe rather PR than marketing. So uh, I like your slide, uh, your and uh, and the university um, slide about the, with, showing comparison of countries in Central Eastern Europe in uh, ten, if I remember correctly, different areas. Well, you can be you can be the best uh, blacksmith in the village or in the city. But if not many people know that you are the best, you will not have clients and you will not uh, have any or small opportunities to monetize your talent and your offer, which is really great. Taxation, uh, legal, talent, um, every, everything that you have mentioned on your, on your table. So a little bit more of positive recognition, a little bit of more, more soft power, a little bit more uh, efforts on international level just to show nice, smiling, face of Poland and uh, that we are open that we are very taught that we have lots of tolerance towards uh, different people that we are not that homogenic that we are not so afraid of people you know with with funky hair cat or you know different uh, and uh, sometimes weird for us um, habits or uh, or mindset um, I remember one very good book, which I can recommend from my side, and that could that could be conclusion from from this end of the wire today. That uh, Richard Florida, Professor Richard Florida, he was analyzing which elements are required for so that a uh, given localization can become a real hub, a real hub for innovation. And he, of course, he evaluated in, uh, Inter Alia uh, Silicon Valley, and he said that every place requires three letters T. First T stands, of course, for technology, second one for talents, but the third one, the third T, represents tolerance. And if there is a lesson that we can um, work at home in Poland, and then we can reproduce it as a very good PR across Central Eastern Europe and further, is the to tolerative element, that element of multicultural, multi multiculturalism, uh, openness, diversity, that will work very much on our, for, for our uh, advantage and that will make those numbers that you have gathered a real tool for all economy to develop. And when I hear people saying, Maciek, Eva, what are you doing guys? You are playing with this little kindergarten projects, you know, free engineers and uh, salesmen. Like what kind of impact can it have to 
uh, to the economy. So I, I'm even, even tired right now to answer these questions. Every innovative economy in 21st century not, does not need to understand. It needs to make a pillar of the, its development over innovation. Please look at NASDAQ and see where these companies come from. Not only they come from technological sector, obviously the definition of NASDAQ gives us this, this, this knowledge, but also from other countries. 55 uh, people, 55 uh, percent of uh, C-level um, managers who IPO'd, so became public with their companies in US, haven't been born in US. 60 percent of PhD, uh, PhD um, students and PhD like um, scholars uh, from math, from algorithmics, haven't, you know, um, end up a primary school in US. Unbelievable. This country and Canada, as I mentioned, they know how to bring people to, to the table. We also should do that. It's economy will not evolve in an island model of 19th century. Uh, so um, that would be my big wish, my cordial wish to my beloved country to transform a bit and uh, benefit from these assets that we have built or you have built, I mean, our listeners for last 30 years or 60 years after the war, even 70 years, yes. Thank you, Maciek, for your input to our, to our discussion. Unfortunately, I have to close <laughs> our webinar as uh, almost one hour uh, um, and passed very quickly. I even haven't noticed, uh, you know, uh, uh, how, how fast uh, it's usually when you have such distinguished guests, uh, the time I think is flying faster <laughs> than usual. So I hope um, to have another discussion with you in uh, in uh, on like further and, and and different we webinar. So uh, for now, uh, I'm very thank you guys for 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 having uh, and 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 agreed to 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 be with us uh, today. Thank you Eva Gerish from Venture Cafe Warsaw, and thank you Maciej Sadowski from Startup Hub, how Poland. Thank you guys.